Hey guys, this is the math lesson for Monday, April the 27th. I have to get a head start on y'all because it takes me a while to get these videos right. So Monday, our math lesson is about tablespoons and teaspoons. And a lot of times when we talk about tablespoons and teaspoons, this is what we think about. This would be one like mama puts in a bowl on the table to get something out to put on your plate. This would be the size that you put beside your plate to eat with, okay? This is called a tablespoon. This is called a teaspoon. But that is not the, the spoons that it's talking about in your math lesson. It is talking about a tablespoon and a teaspoon, but it's talking about measuring spoons. When mama goes to the store and buys a set of measuring spoons, there's usually like four of them in a group. You have your tablespoon, your teaspoon, a half a teaspoon, a fourth of a teaspoon, and they'd be all the holes are up there because they usually have something that keeps them all together. Okay? So if you look in your brown box at the top of page 265, this is Monday's math lesson, it says that three teaspoons equal one tablespoon. So that means if I were to take something like I've got I've got a bowl of salt right here that we're going to play with, okay? So if I were to take that bowl of salt and fill up a teaspoon to the top and put it in that tablespoon, what that is telling me is it would take me three times with that teaspoon to get a full tablespoon. You see what I did? I filled this little one up three times and put it in the big one to get a full tablespoon. So let's look at number 1A. It says one tablespoon equals how many teaspoons? One tablespoon equals how many of these? How many times did I fill this up with salt to make one tablespoon? The answer would be three. Very good. Look at B. It says two tablespoons equal how many teaspoons? If it took three teaspoons to make one tablespoon, how many teaspoons is it going to take if I want to fill this up two times? It's going to take six. Very good. Let's look at C. C says three tablespoons equals how many teaspoons? Tablespoon, teaspoon. How many of these did it take to fill up one of these? I'm dumping salt all over my math book. It took three. So if I want three of these and it took three of these to make one, what am I going to do? Three times three, because I have to fill it up three times, three times three equals how many tablespoons? To get three of these, I would have to fill this up nine times. All right. It's probably one of the easiest measurements we've done. The biggest thing that you have to remember is um, the abbreviations look just about alike. A teaspoon is TSP. And a tablespoon, they have that B in there, okay? So TSP is a teaspoon, and TBSP is a tablespoon. Look at number two. Don't you love conversions? I know that's your favorite part. Look at A. It says 24 teaspoons equals how many tablespoons? Well, the first thing you need to do is figure out how many teaspoons is in one tablespoon what do we we're going from teaspoons remember our smaller to larger if we're going from smaller to larger zoe what are we going to do we're going to divide so if we're going from teaspoons to tablespoons we've got to divide and how many teaspoons was in one tablespoon that's right, it's three. So we're going to say 24 divided by three to get our answer. 
And our answer would be what? Solomon, what's the answer? The answer is eight. 24 teaspoons is the same as having eight tablespoons. So remember, what you have to do is convert the one that is different, just like we do in equations, you've got to get it so it equals what you're looking for in your answer. All right, so in math on Monday, we're going to do all of number one. We're going to do all of number two. Let's look at the word problem, number three. The temperature of one cold day at Plymouth Rock was 18 degrees below freezing on the Fahrenheit scale. Set the thermometer to the correct temperature. So what's freezing in Fahrenheit? Who remembers? What's, what's freezing in Fahrenheit? It's 32 degrees, right? If it gets below 32 degrees here in North Carolina and rain starts falling, what do we have? We have sleet or snow, don't we? So we're going to take 32 degrees and we want to know what 18 degrees less is. Listen to the clue word, less. If we want to know what 18 degrees less is, what are we going to do? That's right, Anna Thomas, we're going to subtract. We're going to take that 32 degrees and we're going to subtract 18 degrees to find out what our answer is. Look at the top of page 266. We're going to do all the number four. I want you to look at number four. What do I have to do to be able to multiply in 4a? Well, first of all, they both have to be fractions, don't they? Not mixed numbers, not mixed decimals, not whole numbers. They both have to be fractions. You have to multiply like numbers by like numbers. So we would change that 5 and 1 half by multiplying. Who wants to give me the answer? All right, Elijah, can you tell me? By multiplying 5 times 2 gives us 10 plus that 1 is 11. What's going to be our denominator? 2, so we've got 11 halves times. We can't say 11 halves times 6. How are we going to make 6 a fraction? That's right, by putting a 1 under it. When we have 11 and a half times 6 over 1, then we can cancel and get our answer. Why do we cancel? Do we have to cancel to get the answer, except when Miss Smith says, you need to cancel? No, it is not a necessary step, but it makes it easier. If it makes it easier, why not do it? If Miss Smith says you have to, you don't have a choice. If I don't say you have to, why not do it anyway? Just like when we subtract, sometimes I forget and say, check your subtraction. Well, some of, well, most of you have learned that if we have subtraction, what does Miss Smith expect? I expect you to check it because it's easy. Why miss a subtraction problem when you can check it and know if you need to go back and rework it? Same thing with division. Do you have to check it to get a division problem to work out? No. But doesn't it make sense as easy it is to check it? To just turn around and check your answer to be sure it works instead of losing five points because you chose not to take an extra minute to check it. Same with cancellation. Why not take an extra minute and cancel and make it easier? That way you don't have large numbers that you have to worry about reducing. On number five, we're solving for the missing number, uh, missing letter. In this lesson, they're using X for the missing letter. Please write out all the steps. Miss Smith, I can do it in my head. Okay, I can do it in my head too. But if you write it down, if you happen to do it wrong in your head, you'll catch yourself if you write it down and you go back and put your answer in the equation 
and check it. That's why I say you're not finished until you rewrite the original equation with your new answer to be sure that it works out. Takes an extra minute, guys, and can make a better grade that way. All right, on number six, I'm just going to ask you to do 6A unless you think you need a lot of practice. And if you do, by all means, do all of them. But I would like for everybody to do 6A. And I do want you to check it, please. And that's all we'll do on page 266. It's not a hard lesson. I hope you have a good day and it goes smoothly. Thanks.